Welcome to my lecture online. In this video, we're going to show you how we can take the two solutions for the ordinary second order differential equation that describes oscillatory motion, how that can be turned into a single general solution. In other words, we're going to show you that x equals b sine of omega t and x equals c cosine of omega t, both solutions to the, dif to the differential equation for simple harmonic motion, can be turned into this single combined solution. So we're going to employ a triangle relationship like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that x of t is going to be the solution by combining the two, b times the sine of omega t plus c times the cosine of omega t. And the way it's done, it's a mathematical trick, is to divide both of them by the hypotenuse of that triangle. So we're going to divide that by the square root of b squared plus c squared. And the same over here, the square root of b squared plus c squared. And of course, when we do that, we also must multiply the whole thing by the square root of b squared plus c squared in order to not have changed anything about the function. But now when you look at b divided by this denominator and c divided by the denominator, and you come up here, you can see there's a relationship. And notice since b is the adjacent side to the angle, we can then say that the cosine of the angle phi is equal to the relation or the ratio of the adjacent side b divided by the hypotenuse, the square root of b squared plus c squared. And we could do the same with the sine function. The sine of phi is equal to the opposite side c divided by the hypotenuse of b squared plus c squared. And now we can make that substitution into our equation. Now we can say that x of t is equal to, notice that b divided by the square root of b squared plus c squared is equal to the cosine of phi. So we can write this as the sine of omega t times the cosine of phi. And then here we can write this plus c divided by the square root of b squared plus c squared is the sine of phi. So this can be written as the cosine of omega t times the sine of phi. And maybe we could have written the other way around, doesn't matter. And then we're going to multiply this whole thing by the square root of b squared plus c squared, but we're going to call that a. So we replace that with a, where a now is going to become the amplitude of the combined solution. Now we can look at that and say, well, that looks like an identity. In other words, we can say that the sine of alpha plus beta is equal to the sine of alpha. Whoop. It doesn't look like the sine at all. Let me try this again. Forgot the i in there. The sine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. And if you look at this, and you look at this, that has the exact same format. So if alpha is omega t and beta is phi, then we have cosine of omega t and sine of b. Yeah, that word, or beta, and that works, so that's exactly the same, so that means that we can write x as a function of time is equal to the amplitude a times the sine of the sum of the two, so it would be times the sine of omega t plus phi. And that then becomes the general solution of our second order differential equation describing the oscillatory motion. We realize that a then is equal to the square root of the magnitude of the two functions, b squared plus c squared. And we know that phi is equal to, now take a look over here, notice that we can say that the tangent of phi is equal to the opposite side c over the adjacent side b, so phi is the inverse tangent of c over b. So with these two relationships, we can see that that is now the combined function of our differential equation. And that is how it's done.